Okay, this is the second of two videos, the first one being an introduction to the Doppler effect and redshift. And this part is just for A-level, where we're gonna be looking at how we can calculate recessional velocity, that is how fast galaxies are moving away from us, and something called the Hubble constant as well. Now what we can do is draw a graph. Uh, we can put a distance that a galaxy is away from the Earth on the x-axis, and we can put a recessional velocity on the y-axis. Now, sure, we can use meters for distance and we can use meters per second for recessional velocity, but more often than not, you'll see distance measured in megaparsecs. If you don't know what a parsec is, have a look at my parallax video. Parsec is short for parallax second. It's just a very big unit of length. Recessional velocity, again, meters per second, they're going fast, so usually you'll see it in kilometers per second. And obviously recessional velocity is calculated from the red shift, but we haven't talked about how that's done yet, but we will in a minute. What we see is that if we look at all of the galaxies that are moving away from us, we can see that, like we said, the further they are away from us, the faster they are moving away from us. So there is a proportional relationship between distance and recessional velocity. It gives us that nice straight line there and we can extrapolate the line back to the origin and it, so it does seem to go back to zero, zero. So because of this, we can therefore say that V is proportional to D. Recessional velocity is proportional to distance, how far they are away from us. To turn this into an equation, obviously we need a constant and this is called the Hubble constant. And it turns out that the Hubble constant has a value of around 70, although it does depend on who you ask, but that's 70 kilometers per second per megaparsec. So that's a nice number, even though the units are a little bit crazy, but that just says that for a galaxy that's one megaparsec away, its recessional velocity is 70 kilometers per second. If you look at a galaxy that's two megaparsecs away, then the recessional velocity should be 140, so on and so forth. So obviously it's the gradient of this line that gives us the Hubble constant, because it's recessional velocity divided by the distance. So that's it in those units, but what if we were to use meters per second and meters? Well, it actually comes out as 2.22 times 10 to the minus 18. And what's the unit of that gonna be? Well, it's meters per second divided by meters, the meters cancel and we end up with just seconds to the minus one. Bit of a weird unit, it's actually the same unit as Hertz. But if we wanted to actually find out a time from this, if we do one over the Hubble constant, we end up with not s to the minus one, but seconds. What does that actually give you? It theoretically gives you the age of the universe. If the theory is correct, and well, we'll never know because no one was there, but if the theory is correct, then if we do one divided by this tiny, tiny number here, we'll get a huge number in seconds, and that gives us the age of the universe. But the big question is, is how do we calculate the relative velocity between a source of a wave and the observer using the Doppler effect? Let's have a look. So the equation for just general Doppler effect is this, the change in wavelength, and this is the original wavelength, that is equal to the speed between the observer and the source, divided by C, that is the actual speed of the wave that's being emitted and observed. But it not only works for wavelength, it also works for frequency as well. So you should have come across delta before, it just means difference in or change in. So we have the normal or original wavelength or frequency on the bottom, and then we have the change in the wavelength or the frequency on top. And in both cases, the ratio of those two is equal to the ratio of the speed. And we said this is the relative speed or velocity between the source of the wave and observer. And then we said this is the, the wave speed. So if we were looking at our ambulance, then this would be the speed at which it was going past us. This would be the speed of sound, about 300 meters per second. This would be the wavelength or the frequency of the sound being made by the siren. That's what the paramedic would hear inside the ambulance. But this up here is going to be the difference between what the paramedic hears and what we hear. So let's say it was making a 400 hertz sound, but we hear a 300 hertz sound. 
then that means that this here would just be 100 because it's one take away the other. Now you might be asking, which one goes first? Do we do original take away new or new take away original to get this difference? Well, in reality, it doesn't matter because you're just gonna get a minus if you do it the other way around, you're gonna get the same number. So if you see a minus in front of these equations, that's implying that there is a certain way of doing it. But in reality, like I said, it doesn't matter, but you must make sure that you keep your head on straight as to whether the wavelength and the frequency are increasing or decreasing. Tell you what, let's have a look at an example. Let's say that our ambulance is moving away from you, let's say at 20 meters per second. What is the observed frequency of the sound of it is emitted at 500 hertz? So we know we're gonna be dealing with frequency here, so delta F divided by the original frequency, so that's 500, is equal to our relative speed, so it's moving away from us at 20, divided by the speed of sound, which is 300. So if I want the change in frequency, then I need to times this side by 500. And that gives me 33 hertz. But of course, that is not the new frequency of the sound that we hear, that is the difference. So we've now got to think, is it going to be 33 hertz higher than the 500 or 33 hertz lower? Well, of course, it is moving away from us. So that means that it's going to be a lower frequency. So therefore, 500 take away 33, and that gives us 467 hertz. That is the new frequency that we hear of the ambulance siren. What would it be if it was coming towards us? It would just be 500 plus 33 instead. Now, the same thing can be applied to galaxies, but more often than not, we just use wavelength. We don't use the frequency of the light. Incidentally, this ratio here has its own special name. It's given the symbol Z. That is just Doppler shift. Strictly speaking, Doppler shift is minus V over C and minus delta F over F. It's actually the, the same as delta lambda over lambda. Don't worry about that too much though, because just the magnitude that we're concerned about. Now, one thing that I need to mention as well is that in a galaxy, not every single bit of that galaxy is gonna be moving away from us because nothing is really stationary in a galaxy. Even though the whole galaxy will be moving away from us, there will be things inside of it that are orbiting around the center that are moving towards us, even though the galaxy is moving away. In a galaxy, you will see mostly redshift, but you will also see some blue shift because some stars and systems will be moving towards us a little bit. But let's say that we have a star in a galaxy and it's receding from us at a speed of 64 kilometers per second. That's usually how you'll see speeds being written. Of course, we need to turn that into meters per second if we're going to use it in an equation. So 64,000 meters per second or 6.4 times 10 to the four meters per second. Okay, so we have our recession velocity. Now a spectral line it emits is at 589 nanometers. What would be the observed wavelength of this spectral line on Earth? Again, so we're talking about wavelength here. So let's just say the change in wavelength divided by the original wavelength and that's 589. Now, do I need to write down the wavelength in meters? Well, no, I don't because this is just a ratio. If I use 589, whatever this comes out as is also gonna be in nanometers and that's okay. That's a good thing about ratios. Equals, well, our velocity is 6.4 times 10 to the four meters per second. And then we divide that by the speed of the wave, which is obviously light. So that's divided by three times 10 to the eight. So rearranging this, and I should have said here 0 0.0 because we are talking about such a small change that we do need to go to that extra significant figure here. And that gives us a measly 0 0.1 nanometers change. So the change in the wavelength is 0 0.1 nanometers. But we're looking for the actual observed wavelength. This is just the change. Now we've just got to finally think, well, it is moving away from us. So that means that the waves are going to be stretched. So that means that the new wavelength, I can just call that lambda one, or you can call it lambda prime or anything like that, is just going to be 589.1 nanometers. And there you go. Last thing that's worth talking about very quickly, a binary system, binary star systems. You can actually get two stars 
that are trying to orbit around each other. Well, technically they are orbiting around each other. If we pretend that one of the stars is staying still, then we just see the other star go around it. But the problem is, is that that's happening to both of them. So instead of orbiting around each other, as it were, they orbit around a common center. Now, if these stars are lined up with the Earth, in other words, here's your two stars here, and so they orbit each other like this. So we're actually looking down the plane of their orbit, as it were. Once they orbit, one is coming towards the Earth while the other one is going away. And here for a split second, they're actually not moving towards or away from the Earth. And then they carry on. The one in my left hand is moving away from the Earth and one in my right hand is coming towards the Earth. And so actually what we get is both redshift and blue shift happening at the same time. So if we have an emission spectrum, like we saw earlier, I just haven't drawn the colors on here this time. If that's our emission line, if that's the wavelength that's being emitted, then what we can observe is a red shifted emission line and a blue shifted emission line. That's when one star is going to be moving away, one star is going to be moving towards the Earth. And like I said, that's most prominent when they are either side of their orbit like that. So we can see both the stars, but once they come like that, the effect is diminished because their speeds at which they're moving away from us or towards us is actually decreased. So there we go, that's Doppler effect done and dusted. If you have any questions, please put them down below in the comments. And if you found this helpful, please don't forget to leave a like. And I'll see you next time.